Hey, I'm Jonathan McHugh, The Q and Q Score. And Jersey Boy is another great music film that just hit theaters recently, directed by my movie hero, Clint Eastwood. The film, based on the hit Broadway play, tells the tale of four young men from the wrong side of the tracks in New Jersey who came together to form the iconic 60s rock group, The Four Seasons. Make it a top choice on your movie list this summer, as Clint is never bad, and you know that music is so good. Check it out. Hello and welcome back to Q-Score for our second part of interview with veteran music supervisor Kevin Edelman. Kevin is celebrating his 20th anniversary of music supervising and he's done over a hundred music projects. Incredible. Please welcome one of the busiest and coolest guys in the game, Kevin Edelman. Thanks for coming back and visiting yeah, with us, buddy. Pleasure. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's like, you know, a couple minutes. It's been yeah, a while. <laughs> so, um, on, your, on the first part of the show, we talked about many of the amount of shows that you've done. And now we really want to cover some of the things that you're working on now. Because concurrently, you're able to balance, which is, I think, a beautiful thing in life to be able to balance not only family and kids, yeah. but a number of shows. Right. Um, number of kids now. And number, how many you got now? You Three had, now, yeah. You just had a sec, third, third, third yeah. kid. How long ago? A month ago. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you're not sleeping. No, it's chaos. <laughs> I remember when I had the third kid, I was like, what were you It's thinking? all good, though. How did this work? It's all fun It's stuff. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Um, okay, so you do one of my favorite shows, Homeland. Now, I don't watch a ton of network TV, but I'm deep in the, the, you know, the cable, the HBO spaces yeah. of the world, and my friend Howard Gordon uh, runs that show, helped create that show from Israel. So talk about you know, the first, last couple years you shot in the Middle East, and last year a little bit of Latin America, and so talk about the musics you, you have used before and what else is coming for the show. Okay. As much as you can tell, because I know yeah, it's no, one there's of those not, shows. There's not much I can tell you but, uh, about what's coming. Uh, Except that it's really good. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, it's it's just so well crafted that show. Yeah. It really is. Um, the the music in the first three seasons have kind of gone through a uh, an evolution, like most shows. Um, we've been able to use some really interesting uh, music. Some of it has been uh, locale based. Uh, some of it has been, you know, uh, just interesting needle drops. Um, but you know, we we also obviously had the the um, uh, the we had the um, what's the word I'm looking for? We we had a uh, uh, something to ha hang our hat on in the first season with one of the main characters, Carrie, having this affinity for jazz, and and that became. Uh, something that we went back to, a well that we went back to several times uh, in the first couple seasons. Uh, it became part of her character. It became something that, that drove her in certain, in certain areas. Um, and I think and it actually was such a part of the character that it got spoofed on Saturday Night Live, which was really? a big, um, you know. Badge of honor. Badge of honor for, <laughs> for all involved, I sure. think. When they, when they actually did a spoof of, of uh, Carrie, I, I believe, played by um, Anne Hathaway. Oh, my god. And uh, that, she had a jazz freak out on the, on in in the skit where she just <laughs> it's started. Great. Yeah, it was it was it was fantastic, uh, but but uh, no, the show is great. I mean, it's just a great experience all the way around. The people are uh, just some of the most talented writers, actors, producers. You know, it really is just the A team working on that show. And I remember, I think last year you debuted a Van Morrison track, didn't you? Tell yes. us about that. Was that hard to clear? Because Van doesn't clear that it, much it stuff. Was actually, it was actually recorded for the show. Right. So talk about the, how that It was up. an interesting, it was an interesting um, uh, project. Uh, you know, we had gone out to a handful of artists to see, to gauge the interest of being involved in, you know, a soundtrack and, and creating some new music for the show. And Van expressed interest. Um, however, we weren't privy to what song he was interested in recording. And then one day it came. And we, uh, you know, thankfully it was a, it was a beautiful um, merging of what was coming up in the story and the actual song that he chose, which was uh, Bye Bye Blackbird. Uh, it, was, it was just a, a perfect song for the season. I think he had, you know, been watching the show and, and kind of had an idea of where it was going. But it was, it was very interesting uh, on the creative level because we were waiting to hear what he was interesting to, interested in recording. We had given him some song ideas. And um, and then this thing arrived. 
Van does what Van wants yeah, to do. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Sure. But it was all uh, the stars were lining up because I happened to be screening uh, the next episode maybe the week after that. And I said, oh, man, this is a great place for this. I know exactly the spot. And I previewed it for the, the exec producer, Alex, Alex Gonza. And he loved it, and then we showed it to the other exec, exec producers, and it went through the, the approval process sure. within, which is not easy on that show because everyone takes every single thing very seriously. Yeah. They, they don't um, make any creative decision lightly. Right. So to use uh, a piece like that through the entire end of an episode and into end credits was a, was a you know, a, a big uh, right. nod from that. And shooting so. in the Middle East with so much Middle Eastern storyline there, yeah. the conflict, um, how much research do you have to do to find some of that ethnic flavored music that feels, puts you in that place, help, yeah. helps put you in that place? I mean, I'm constantly doing that on that show. I'm, I'm always looking f out to, to the resources that I know and trust, that I, that I know have, have offices e either in the Middle East or contacts and labels that they deal with in the Middle East to, to, uh, and, and in other locations where the show has taken us, um, to get us authentic, um, material that we know is going to be licensable and it's going to be clearable. I mean, that's, that's you know, one of the big challenges of our job is we, you can find great music anywhere okay, with, for the with this crazy thing called the internet. You can, you can find anything. Right. But what's realistic in terms of your time frames, your budgets, and just being able to make clean deals? That's, that's the part that, you know, a good music supervisor has to look at and has to really uh, balance when you're trying to, you know, fill a show with with authentic and, uh, you know, appropriate music, so so that's something I'm constantly doing on that show. I'm looking ahead at the scripts and I'm I'm seeing where they're going and and, you know, what type of uh, uh, regional music I might need, and I'm reaching out to resources that I think can deliver, you know, within our budget, clean licenses, and I'm getting some great stuff. That's cool. Really getting some great stuff in that in that show. So yeah, Howard uh, at Breakfast from recently told me you guys are shooting South Africa next year, yeah. right? So I'm assuming you're going to try to use some of the music. Is there anything you can talk about yet as far as the palette of music you're using? Uh, I really can't, uh, only because it would you know it would tip to the story. Um, but you know they wherever they are, I am always looking to to find great authentic music. Um, uh, they are shooting in, in, in Cape Town, but uh, you know we'll, we'll see. We'll see where the, sure. where the we'll story. We'll in. see where the story takes us. Um, it's a great one. And you also have some other shows coming up. You yeah. mentioned to me Legends. Tell me about that show. Oh, Legends is another Howard, Howard Gordon show um, for TNT, uh, starring Sean Bean. It's uh, it's it's a very interesting concept about an undercover operative who is kind of struggling with um, his his multiple identities, uh -oh. which is... Internal personality. Huh? Yeah, it, it's really well done. It's really interesting, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It airs in, uh, in August on TNT. And what's the process musically there? What do you think? Uh, well, you know, uh, we're just getting started. I, I, you know, we're just starting to mix the first few episodes that are going to air. We, fi we finished the pilot. I mean, the pilot was done last year. They did some, you know, revamping of it, and we're actually today finishing the mix on the, uh, or last night finished the mix on the uh, on the, the pilot, and then the first new episode that was shot um, of the 10, which will be the, the series for the season. And you're also doing a Rain Wilson show, right? Yeah. Uh, that will be on Fox. It's called Backstrom, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's from the creator of Bones, Hart Hansen, who is another one of those, you know, rare uh, character writers. I mean, he just writes writes characters uh, beautifully where, where you just don't know what's coming and he's done it with Bones for right. we're going into this 10th season. Right, somehow. so you've been on, have you been on the show the whole time? Uh, no, I, I came on to Bones the end of season three, so I've been okay. on for coming on seven years. And, and how is it, um, the procedural dramas like Bones, like how, how do you approach music and work with a guy like Art musically? Does he come up with stuff? Do you pitch him? Yeah, it's, it's both. You... It's collaborative. Um, you know, the day-to-day the -day showrunner on that, on that show is Stephen Nathan. Um, Hart's also involved, but they're, they're all super collaborative people. And that's the, you know, that's one of the beauties of, of working on certain projects when you're working with collaborative producers and directors that really trust your, your, um, 
instincts, taste. your taste, your instincts. And you know the show, so and, you know and, the vibe. And, you know, they know that you know the show, and they know that you, you're, you're looking out for the best interests of the show. So, uh, I mean, it really is, you know, the process on, on shows like that, especially going into season 10, you know, we've been doing it a while. We, you know, I'll, I'll make suggestions based on the script and based on um, cuts that I see. And uh, it'll go through the approval process and post-production with the producers, and and you know, they'll either say they love it or they want more options. Right. So it's it's a pretty smooth machine at this point. So. And talk about the process of, you get put up for a pilot. Yeah. Right. Pilots come. There's 20, 30, 40 shot. I don't know what they are shot. Yeah. And you know, you get a shot to to do the pilot. And if the pilot goes, obviously you're on board. Um, so. Do you, well, each pilot means you could work on that show for one year, two years, ten years. You don't sure. know. You so don't it's know. kind of a really important moment in time. Yeah. Talk about the process of getting them and nailing them. The, the, the pilot process in general, I think uh, most people in our business would agree with me that it's just, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, it, it really is a, a, uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Um, you never really know... Um, if you're going to get on a series, even if you do the pilot, that, that's the. It's not a given, right? No, it's not a given. I, I think the it's the assumption and it's the expectation, but um, a lot of times it doesn't happen uh, it, for whatever reason. A new showrunner is brought in to to run the show, and they want their people, um, or you know, the, the pressure cooker that is a pilot really makes everyone kind of makes it an unpleasant experience. Unpleasant experience for a lot of people that are that you know and then there's when so it, much pressure to get a lot that of pressure show going. So and, and a lot of people's entire careers are riding on, you know, these show creators that that put their entire existence into getting the show off the ground. They're um, they have a lot riding on it and you know, they just they always uh, not all of them there's some that just feel like it could always be better, it could always be better. And they, so, so getting a pilot is one thing, and then securing the gig for the series is another thing. And both of those is, uh, you know, uh, it could, mean, could mean anything from working on one episode to 10 years of a show. So, right. you know, you have to treat them all like they could be a, a multi-year successful show that's gonna that's gonna really you know be a good uh, stable gig for a while um, but the pilot process in general is is really you know it's it's a bit of a free-for-all sure you know everyone's what's the most coming. you've ever did in one season how many pilots, pilots? Yeah. I think one season I worked on uh, seven or eight pilots <laughs> but again uh, like we talked how many about you end up working on uh, that year I think a couple I think maybe maybe out of that season where I did that many pilots, out of the seven or eight, I think maybe two got picked up and I maybe right. worked on one of them. So right. it was so a there's lot. So there's a serious attrition rate to it. Yeah, major. And then there was one season where I worked on a handful of pilots and every single, this was two years ago, and every single one got picked up. It's a, or everyone except one. So, you know, you really, you it's really, crap it's a crapshoot. You, you right. really don't know. I mean, you, you know the producers you're working with, usually. Um, you can tell if, if you think it's a good script and you think it's, it's a viable uh, show, but you, you, you can't begin to guess what the programmers are thinking and, and what they're going to want for the particular time slot on Tuesday night at 9.30. Right. So um, you just do your best work and, and hope for the best. That's that's the that's the pilot process. It's really do your best work and hope for the best. Right. And, and actors and, and actresses and everybody, everybody, everybody who's on the pilot has the same pressure to, is that show going to be this my life, take, you know, for a number of years? Yeah, it could be a one episode and done, or it could be, you know, this is what we're working on right. for, for many years. And do you see the difference? Cable, obviously, is a little bit more forgiving. Yep. There's the HBOs that are super forgiving that just give things a time to build yep. and marinate. There's cable, which gives it a little more time. Then there's network, like three, four episodes, you're done. Yeah. Um, how do you work on that process, knowing the pressure of network? Because you do a lot of network. Yeah. Knowing the pressure of network is so intense. How do you look at that show differently, so to speak? It's a good question. I, I think you, you just always look at it as um, it has the potential to be a very successful show. Even if it comes out of the gate slow, you just keep trying to make it as good as it can be because many shows you know, are bubble shows that end up being you know, huge hits. I mean, there, there are many shows that, that uh, almost didn't, didn't get past one or two seasons, yep. and then they, they, they do, and they end up being big hits. Um, How I Met Your Mother is one of them who, uh, you know, my, 
my associate Andy works on. And oh, Andy's on that show? He had worked on. It's, okay. it's finished now, but he, he worked on but it. But what a run that was. What How long run. was he on that show? Yeah, he was on it, uh, I believe, for six, seven years. Yeah, my yeah. friend Chuck Tatha, shout out to you, Chuck, uh, who's been on that show for years and has yeah. actually appeared in the show. I don't know if uh, you know no, him, but no. he, uh, and he had a great run. Yeah, I mean, and that, just, was one, that was a show that almost didn't make it several times, but you're, you're right. The network uh, process definitely is, is less forgiving, and, and they're looking for, for eyeballs immediately. Right. And I, I mean, as a music supervisor, there's only so much we can do. We, we make it as good as we can every week. We collaborate with the producers. We try to you know, use the, the best music we can within our budget and, um, and make the impact of the music mean something right. as, as best we can. And then it's up to you know, powers outside of our control. Sure. And so, you know, we've talked about, we've, as, as Kevin is also with me, a member of the Music Supervisor Guild board, and obviously being recognized by the Emmys is something we've been talking about yeah. as far as, I, I don't do a lot of TV, but for someone like you and people like Frankie Pine and Alex, you know, people who do a lot of TV, um, there is, like you mentioned in the first episode, there's that, some the, there's that division sometimes that composers do what they do and you do what you do. Yeah. And, you know, what are your thoughts about being recognized in the Emmys and what it would mean to you and why you don't, you don't think it's happened? I, I don't, I can't speak to why it hasn't happened yet. It, it seems like a natural evolution of, of, the, um, of the industry. Uh, I, maybe I can speak to why it hasn't happened. I, I think it's just part of the evolution. I think it will happen eventually. I, I really believe that, you know, our business 20 years ago when you and I started was not such a well-defined industry. It was there were a handful of people that were called music supervisors, um, but it wasn't a career path per se. Um, now you know there's there's courses on music supervision. There's books on music supervision. There's there's uh, you know there's a music supervisor on almost every project, and it's become a lot more clear what the the job, the role is of a music supervisor. And that's one of the things that we're, you know, obviously very um, uh, focused on with the Guild and making sure that music supervisors are recognized for, you know, what, what we do as a whole on a project and what we contribute to a project. So uh, I think that, you know, an Emmy category is hopefully in the, in the future, in the near future. Um, it seems like it should be. Seems like a good based idea. Based on based okay. on other areas that are recognized, right. it, it seems like you know where uh, the contribution that music supervisors uh, make to projects at this stage in in uh, TV and film production, yeah, it should be recognized. Yeah, and the billing block credit, you know, supervisor is one of the only ones that doesn't really get its own thing, and that's why yeah. as a guild we started that to try to build a little bit more awareness. Yeah. So let's talk about a couple of the other shows. Uh, yeah. Lucy Liu show, Elementary. What kind of stuff do you use in there, and how's that one different it, than others? It's, uh, it's, it's a tricky one. Uh, it's just a, it's, we use interesting music. It's the best way I can, I can, I can uh, put it on that show. Uh, it's a very uh, well-written show. Uh, it's a very smart show. Um, and we, we try to capture that with, uh, you know, it's, the, it's one of those shows that we tend to use a, a song at the end that, that brings together the Capsulate story. The, encapsulates the episode. Encapsulates yeah. the episode, encapsulates the, the, the tone of what's going on with the characters and the, and the relationship with uh, you know, Sherlock and, mm -hmm. and uh, either Joan or, or some of the other characters that, that come into the And, and then on story. Criminal Minds, you've done 200 yeah. episodes of that Correct. show. So yes. how do you keep that fresh and keep adding new flavor to it? That show is, uh, it's not difficult because the stories are always so, um, it, it, the music is so, always so story driven on that show. So, so whenever I have a new story to look at, a new script, it, it spurs new ideas musically um, based on where they might be in the episode. You know, the team travels a lot to, to different locations. If they're at a bar in Texas. So you can, I get you to, can regionalize it. Yeah. And I tend to do that on that show, depending on where they are and what's going on. You know, if they're if they're in a region that that has a musical taste, a musical sound, I'm going for it. That's what we're going to do. Other than that, if it's if it's more just kind of of the show, we just try to find interesting you know music that that will play. You know, we we use 
a lot. It, it's a very broad show. It, it, it reaches, you know, and it's, uh, it's got fans. Show. It's got fans across the, yeah, the history, board. Amazing history. Male, female, you know, all the areas, you know. So we use broad music. We'll use female music. We'll use male music. We'll use, you know, pop rock. We've used country. We use pretty much right. popular the sounds right. for, that, for that show with themes that make sense for the show. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And then a uh, show I like, the uh, Mindy Project. Talk about that and how, is she actively involved? M in Mindy's very involved in that project. Um, and that's actually a show that I collaborate on uh, with um, Andy Gowan, who's my associate at, at my company, and, um, and Gabe Hilfer. Who Gabe's on there too. Gabe's on the show. That we do it as a as a trio. Music Supervisor Guild Award winner, double award double winner, award Gabe winner Gabe Hilfer. He's a, nice he's work, a good Gabe. friend and and a great music supervisor. And um, you know, last season or two seasons ago, I had done the pilot for Mindy, and the show got picked up. And I really wanted to stay involved with it. But I, you know, well, like we talked about the, the last quota, show, the quota. The, it was just it wasn't. <laughs> it gonna, was on the bubble. I wasn't going to be able to give them what they right. needed. I, I just knew that it was going to be a, a relatively intense uh, show. And Mindy is very involved, and and it's a very creative process over there. They they really are like a a creative machine over there. Um, so I looped in Gabe and said, "Hey, what you know? Why don't we do this together?" And so. Um, Gabe, Andy, and myself are all credited music supervisors, but Gabe is the day to day on that. So he's he's at all the spots. Way to share, buddy. Way to share the wealth. Yeah, we're sharing it. It's a, you know it's a good team, and we've actually done some other projects together. Gabe and I have partnered on a on a film that finished recently, and we're doing another one. So, yeah, it's great. Man. Where it well, makes you're sense. killing it. Where you it know, makes like sense. I said, congratulations yeah. on your third kid, Thank the 20th you. anniversary, your hundredth show. You too. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Edelman, thanks Thank for you. coming in. I'm Q Score. We'll see you next time. For more Q-Score, please check us out at EmpowerMe.tv to find out what goes on behind the curtain and how the film and TV music gets made. It happens right here. Tune in.